Now, I want to go ahead and deal with this topic in regards to Lordship Salvation. Lots of people who call themselves Christians, who profess faith in Christ, will denounce Lordship Salvation as heresy. Now, I want to deal with that in regards to antinomianism uh, in light of Lordship Salvation. A subscriber emailed me, and he wanted me to basically detail in a video my stance on Lordship Salvation. Now, the question is, is Lordship Salvation biblical? And with a resounding yes, I respond. Yes, it is biblical. Um, now, in regards to antinomianism, if you don't know what that is, anti means against, and nomos in the Greek means law. So essentially, it's those who are against the law of God. People who are antinomians believe that there are no moral laws God expects Christians to obey. Okay, so antinomianism basically takes a biblical teaching to an unbiblical conclusion. And I want to break this down as simply uh, as I can, but it's not so easy. Uh, in defense of Lordship Salvation... What we essentially believe is that Jesus Christ finished the work. He finished it. Okay. He shed his blood. He became our propitiation for our sins. He rose on the third day, defeating sin and death. He finished it. He earned the right to be called Lord. He is Lord. Um, and if you have been saved, if you are truly in Christ, regenerated by the Holy Spirit, thus becoming a new creature in Christ, you have to not only treat him as Lord or not only confess him as Lord, he must be treated as Lord. And all that simply means is that you must do what he says. If he is Lord of your life, you must do what he says. You must agree with what he says is good and you must hate what he hates. That's all it means to be or to uh, take on the Lordship salvation stance. You're just treating God as Lord of your life. Okay. And so in regards to antinomianism, there, there's, their problem is that they, they misinterpret what we mean in regards to uh, the law. See, those of us who uh, take a, you know, a, a doctrine of grace, those of us who, are, uh, who deal with sovereignty and uh, lordship salvation and uh, the tulip, certain points of the tulip, what we're saying is this. The law does not save you, Okay. Keeping the law cannot save you because you can't keep it. You've already broken it. And James 2.10 makes it clear if you've broken one law, you've broken them all. So we've already broke the law. That's why Christ had to die. Okay. So our stance is not that we have to keep the law. Okay. That's not our stance. Our stance is that if you are the Lord's and if he is Lord of your life, the law has substantial meaning in your life. It means something. Okay, and to, to and to the people that are against lordship salvation, in regards to the law, this is how you stump them. You ask them, you ask them simple questions in regards to the law. How do you feel about adultery? Can a man just go out and cheat on his wife? He professes faith in Christ and then goes out and cheats on his wife. Is that not an issue? Can someone in a habitual style of life lie, be a liar, or be a thief, or hate people? Can you do that? Now, their answer is going to prove everything. See, you've cornered them with, with that question. Does the, do the, does the law matter at all? And if they say no, then they've just blasphemed everything, absolutely everything. If they say yes, then they have to admit that even though we're no longer under the law, the law still holds place. And it has an importance in everyday life, in the, the believer's life. And not just in our life, but when we deal with evangelism, the law is amazing in, in breaking down all the hiding places that sinners seek to, to use to hide from it. Okay, The law essentially, uh, what does Romans 3.19 says? The law of God is for all those under the law so that it may shut their, excuse me, that it may shut their mouths. That's what the law of God does. It takes away every hiding place. Someone may say, uh, the way God set it up, he set it up so perfect. So it exposes anyone. Someone may say, well, I've never physically cheated on my wife. Well, you may have never slept with another woman, but you have lusted after someone who wasn't your wife. Or I've never murdered anyone. Yeah, but you've hated someone. So you see how God makes it so there are no, ex there's no way to escape. You have to deal with it. Okay, you either have to deal with it or avoid it. But there's no way to break it. There's no way to uh, get over on it. And that's, essentially how we see the law okay um in regards to its importance and the fact that it matters even today uh 
So for someone to disagree with Lordship Salvation is someone to essentially disagree with the sovereignty of God, okay, in regards to uh, his own position over the Christian. His law matters because he matters. And if you treat him as Lord, you must do what he says. That's what treating him as Lord means. And so when someone says, uh, I don't agree with uh, the law of God being important, what they're saying is they will outright profess Jesus as Lord, but in the same breath say, I don't have to do what he says. Okay, that's what you're saying. You're saying, I'll call Jesus Lord, but I don't have to do what he says. And that's blasphemous because you're denying uh, his deity and his position of authority over you as a professed believer in Christ. So, yes, I do believe Lordship Salvation is biblical. Um, antinomianism is heretical. It's demonic. Um, it's a tool Satan uses to confuse people and get them to believe in false gods. Okay, um, so I hope I've answered that question. Thank you for listening.